Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or your computer. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Folks, if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com bcc. That's joinhoney.com slash bcc. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. Browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. I would strongly recommend it. I love my PCP. Go to ZocDoc.com slash bcc and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash bcc. ZocDoc.com slash bcc. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the chain. chain. Hi, we are your hosts, Sarah Shower and Kendall Landreth. And this is the BCC Club, where each week we talk about the weirdest parts of the internet. Who do we have on the podcast today, Kendall? Well, we have the most incredible oh, stop. Morgan Absher of Two Hot Takes. Yes. Is that, yes. Oh, you got it. it right? You crushed it. Absolutely. I was like, a lot of people head. struggle, so you did, like, you did good. I was like, she just said it to me, and I was saying <laughs> it so slowly, Morgan. <laughs> Sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on. We're excited. super excited because today's topic is Reddit, specifically Am I the Asshole? Morgan is an Am I the Asshole subreddit god. Uh, we do have some examples <laughs> of the subreddit, so we're really hoping that Morgan is super great at pretending like she's never heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm so excited because I always listen to the Am I the Asshole I t- assume it's you yeah. reading them. Some of them, I think yeah. it probably is because when you were talking, I was like, this does feel crazy because you're the person who voices over like when people the are slime. scooping like slime or yeah. they're scooping cement out of buckets. It's always like your voice. It's very calming. The most I get recognized is by my voice. Yeah. Like it's so, it's so weird. They're like, why do you sound so familiar? Oh my God, you're the am I the asshole girl? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's, it's. That's not Morgan. It's just, am I the asshole girl? Mm-hmm. Have you ever, fine. Um, so like on TikTok, the, you like said the slime and like the cement videos. Yeah. Have you ever, I know you post your clips online. Have you ever just gone ahead and like split the screen and made it your face and then added your own slime video? I'm going to. I'm actually <laughs> yeah. going to. That I, would like, be so funny. Well, I made a joke about it. And I think like, I mean, as a creator, like you can definitely mm. relate where like people will just like take the audio and then like post it as their own. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't care if you use the audio, but like, just give me the credit, make it link back to my page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna sabotage all of them. I'm gonna one up. Not only am I gonna have the stories, I'm gonna have the slime. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm yeah. gonna have <laughs> the ASMR. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Whatever cigarettes in the pipe with the cement over it. I'm gonna start learning how to make rings. Yeah. The ring making videos. <laughs> yes. I, one of those I've never heard of. That. Oh my God. I got influenced so hard. I actually ordered one. So they'll take my sound and then they'll like, have their little machine where they weld the ring and mm-hmm. solder it and put the stones in and I'm that sounds incredible. I'm mm-hmm. a victim of um, QVC and yeah all things Instagram marketing and none of them work. They're all bad. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I feel bad. like as millennials we buy stuff of off off Instagram. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I okay. buy a lot, especially now because. You can just, I think I talked about this before, where now it's connected to my Apple Pay. Oh, it's so, so dangerous. So I can see something, and I just press the link, and then I just side-click my phone, and it literally purchases it and sends it to my house. It it's too easy. It takes half a second. Mm-hmm. And I've ordered, I just ordered a mushroom nightlight for my bathroom. Oh, oh my I've God. seen those. I saw that one, too. It's honestly incredible. It's yeah. really cute. That one's worth it. It's really cute. I mean, it is truly pointless, yeah. but I am obsessed with it, and it's incredible. But it was I would have never purchased that. If they'd ever asked, like, okay, fill in your information, put in your credit card information, I would have never purchased it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't have to. Speaking of buying mushrooms this past week, Kendall, how was your week? Good. I'm sorry. I have something in my eye. <laughs> it's okay. It's a- <laughs> Kendall, I think you apologize too much. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Literally. I it's, says that a lot. You're so Canadian. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. Start. Okay. How was my week? Yes. <laughs> it was yes. good. It was good. I went to 
a Spotify party that I know you guys were mm-hmm. also at mm-hmm. and Gwen Stefani performed. Yeah. And I was, well, it was the best time of my Did life. Did you try shrooms for the first time? No. Oh, I thought that's the, the mushroom, mushroom nightlight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have shrooms, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I, I was just like having the best time of my life, and I hesitate to share this because Michelle never hear this, but I, I was drunker than I probably have ever been, which I don't know how that happened because I really, mm-hmm. I did not drink more than I usually have. I don't, something was on those cocktails. Maybe I was just also really excited about Gwen Stefani. Gwen <laughs> Stefani is up on stage. I'm like a foot away from her. I feel like I'm in a fever dream. I turn and I look to my left. Rebecca Black is standing right next to me. Mm-hmm. And I did feel like I was oh on mushrooms. I did feel like I was fully <laughs> on mushrooms. That was an incredible experience. Yeah. We actually follow each other on Instagram. I love You her. and Rebecca Black? Yeah. I, I love s- that for you. I see her all the time at like gay, um, like stand up like shows. Oh, mm-hmm. I love that. So I feel like I should just say hi, you know, Absolutely like should. after years of following each other, like, but hey, Becca, I'm Sarah, yeah. you know, just finally introduce myself. Yeah. She, I mean, mm. I'm sure she seems so nice from oh, <laughs> standing yeah. next to her at Gwen Stefani. <laughs> <laughs> she was, uh, she seemed so nice. I, but it did feel crazy because I was like, I don't really think about Rebecca. Rebecca Black in my day to day life, but mm-hmm. I was like, I I think in my brain, because I don't really get starstruck ever. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a person who gets starstruck. There's been very few people. Like one time I saw this cast of Dance Moms and I got pretty starstruck. One time I served Steve Martin at a restaurant, I got pretty starstruck. And last night <laughs> with Rebecca Black, I was like, I'm pretty starstruck. <laughs> But it wasn't like Gwen Stefani on stage. You were just like Rebecca Black. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I felt. Like that's what really I, did it for you. Yeah, I think something about Rebecca Black. It's like she's an icon of my time. Yeah, like that Friday was, was a bop. A, I mean, it was mm-hmm. such a huge thing. And then and then she transfer. She transcended into my lesbian world as well. Yeah, continued to be an icon there. And I, it was just wild. But I really did turn, and it was one of the only times in my life I've been like, I'm too drunk for this. Yeah, <laughs> Rebecca yeah. Black cannot be standing next to me right now. <laughs> Did you also get drunk at the Spotify thing? Yeah, it was. It's probably the worst tequila I've ever had, and so I just like I think I chugged a little just to like actually drink it. But three drinks and like hung over the next day. I'm like, why? Why is this what turning 29 does to you? You just can't drink anymore, and then you get acid reflux the next day. Yeah, it's just terrible getting old. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, tough. Oh, I had the all the mocktails on the menu. Oh, the ginger one was so good. It I was one really of those good. Too. Yeah, I, yeah, honestly, we tried them all, all the mocktails, and they were so good. Mocktails mm. are butter most of the time. I didn't realize, like, when I went to the Spotify event, I had my beta blockers in my backpack, like, in a pill bottle, and they, like, searched your bag, and he was like, what's this? And I was like, beta blockers, and he's like, just really be careful. I was like, you think I want to, like, get fucked up on low blood pressure? <laughs> Like, I'm like, God, I'm so fatigued. I just need to lay down. It's also so funny the thought of a security guard not taking things away, but just, like, giving you a lecture. Yeah, like, you no. bring something so dangerous, and he's like, okay, but I need to tell it's you. a loaded handgun. Only Be one careful. round in the sky. Okay? <laughs> there are people here who could get hurt. Be careful. Yeah. Was this the guy at the metal detector? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he looked at me, looked me up and down. He goes, make smart choices tonight. <laughs> I'm like, what does this mean? Yeah. Yesterday was his birthday. Really? He told me. He oh said tomorrow's my, my birthday. Yeah. So happy birthday. happy birthday. Happy birthday, security man. Mm-hmm. Sarah has a beta blocker with your name on it. Yeah, yeah. With a little bow on it. Time to get relaxed. <laughs> I'll take one. Yeah. Yes. Right now. <laughs> Speaking of people who are not relaxed, mm. we're going to be talking about Reddit today. Ooh. Specifically, the Am I the Asshole subreddit. But, Kendall, what is Reddit? Like a little bit about it. Reddit is basically what I would picture as. When I go to hell, it will just be me yeah. on Reddit. Yeah. In a Reddit thread where everyone talks about every single thing I've ever done. But what is Reddit really? Mm-hmm. Reddit is an American social news aggr- aggregation. Here we go. This is a sentence one. I'm sorry. We have dyslexia. <laughs> Same. Yeah. <laughs> the shit I've been saying backwards lately. Mm-hmm. My little brother has it, and I'm like, they missed it with me. No. <laughs> no. Um, aggregation? Mm-hmm. What is that? You're asking the wrong girl. <laughs> it's like... um. Like plants, no, that's no, what I was no, that's agri- agriculture. Like um, an accumulation, a social agri- Yeah, like it's like where you collect things. Oh. We've said we should have someone on the podcast who just sits in the middle and like helps us with words. Webster, and it's like, Dick- this is yeah, yeah, I need that too. Sound it out, sound it out, Kendall. <laughs> Reddit is an American social news aggregation, content rating, and discussion website. Reddit was founded by Steve Huffman, Alexis Ohanian, and Aaron Schwartz, Schwartz, in two thousand five. Condé Nast Publications acquired the site in October 2006. As of December 2022, Reddit ranks as the 20th, I'm so sorry, 
As of December 2022, Reddit ranks as the 20th most visited website in the world and the sixth most visited website in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. And yeah, I think baby. Alexis Ohanian is married to Serena, Serena Williams. Williams. <gasps> I know. Their wow. little baby is so cute. Oh he's like, God. he's so sweet to her. It's oh. it's really sweet. They're adorable. I mm-hmm. love that. Yeah. I really love that. I love love. Uh, Reddit is hailed as the front page of the internet, and the site's digital influence is powered by its informed, passionate, trend spotting, and engaged users. That's very flattering. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> passionate for sure. Yes. Reddit's mission is to help people discover places where they can be their true selves and empower our community to flourish. Wow, this is really a span, a span, a spin. Uh, Reddit has experienced <laughs> some challenges in terms of managing the topics that its community discusses. While the site aims to uphold the values of free speech, the Reddit community experienced some damage to its reputation after privacy scandals and the rise of some offensive subreddits <laughs> that encourage racism, misogyny, and other inappropriate beliefs or topics. But yes, this is how a, this is a rundown of how Reddit works. We do have some Am I the Asshole posts that we'd like to get to. So I feel like we're just giving yeah. a general overview of what's to be expected on Reddit. Yeah, b- before we mm-hmm. uh, hop into the Am I the Assholes, before obviously you were involved in Am I the Assholes and, and involved, you're not writing them, but you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> never know. You, you just dissociate <laughs> and you're like, what's the meanest thing I could do to my mom at her own wedding? <laughs> yes. Did you... Mm-hmm. Did either of you go on Reddit? Were you Reddit users? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Subreddit? You were on subreddits? Yeah. Incredible. If I have a <laughs> medical problem, I never go to Google. I type in, like, weird rash on my knees. Reddit. Mm-hmm. You know? So yeah. I want to see what, like, their take is. Because it's more, like, to the point and, like, personal firsthand views. Do you ever use Reddit for that? Like, Yeah. Um, I've used it for yeah. really weird stuff. Like, my boyfriend is really into, like, ancient Greece and, mm-hmm. like, ancient Rome. And so I went on there and I found like coin subreddits. So it's like there's every niche under the sun. So mm-hmm. if you want like help fixing your car, you have a weird rash, you want to go <laughs> ask doctors, there's an ask doctor subreddit. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. There's an ancient coins subreddit. So like I went on there and I'm like, hey, what coin would be great from the Londinium time period where Rome like ruled London, blah, blah, blah. And within 15 minutes, I had links to wow. coins. Oh, wow. Like so much thoughtful information. It's great. That's so nice. You yeah. Two rashes on each knee? Um, well, I mean, if... Well, I mean, it, no. No, no. It's just an example. <laughs> All my rashes are above the waist. <laughs> no, but I know that there's the legal advice subreddit mm-hmm. where people, like, yeah. are uh, being sued or want to sue, and then they can, like, type out their situation, and then uh, lawyers in their free time will go through. Or someone will be like, I'm not a lawyer, but, but you should sue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, then why are you commenting? But yes, this is how Reddit works. It's essentially a collection of forums where people can share news and content or comment on other people's posts. Users upvote or downvote posts, increasing or decreasing their visibility, and their number reflects the current sum of upvotes and downvotes. Um, You know, they can also upvote and downvote comments. Every account has a karma number tied to it. What is their karma number? Karma number is like how involved you are on Reddit, Mm -hmm. how good your posts have been. Like if you go on someone's Am I the Asshole and you leave like a really good comment and it gets upvoted, all of that's good karma. Yeah. It makes you look good. Yeah. You're, su- mm-hmm. you're superior to the users that suck. Okay. I see. Okay. You can also get awards. You can get awards? I think my favorite thing is looking at like the posts that go really big yeah. and you see what awards they get. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're a disappointing piece of shit award like, yeah. because you were so brutal. Or there's like a wholesome award. Yeah. There's so many different awards oh. that it, it says a lot about the post just by seen what awards they get do you get like something sent in the mail like uh you know like a youtube plaque i wish of just like piece of shit oh, emoji and I then wish. your username they sh- honestly for what i do for reddit they should give me some sort oh, of plaque yeah yes 100%. like what is reddit do you have a reddit rep um i have a friend there yeah okay yeah his name is dong <laughs> hell yeah no actually yeah dong and um oh my god why am i forgetting her name i have another one Okay. Yeah, if you want one, I'll I'll get you guys one. I feel like I would like to stay off of Reddit, but yeah, yeah. I'm very much anonymous. I feel like, um, yeah, Twitter is my hell that I personally enjoy. Mm -hmm. Reddit is your hell that you personally enjoy. I love it. So Mm -hmm. are you viewed as like a god on Reddit? No, Do you post and people are like, (laughs) no, she's here. No, no. I think people, people only follow me and listen to my stuff because they like the Reddit stories. I talk about myself on my podcast and they yell at me. (laughs) 
Oh yeah, this is um, this is the same thing. <laughs> Whenever we do like an intro of like, how was our week? Everyone's like, skip to the what the topic is. And we're like, all right. Oh, Kendall's there's, dealing with the death of her father, and I'm dealing with the rash in my knees. There's chapters on YouTube for a reason. Click the next one. Yeah. I tried to set that up. I'll teach you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So Reddit is broken up into more than a million communities known as subreddits, each of which covers a different topic. The name of the subreddit begins with r slash. For example, r slash NBA is a subreddit where people talk about the National Basketball Association, where uh, r slash board games is a subreddit for people to discuss board games. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Solid options. I would just post a picture of Monopoly with the caption, you like this? You like... It, it yeah. would probably go viral. Yeah, they'd be like, all right, I'll listen. My favorite one that I... My favorite Reddit page is r slash uh, psychedelics Ooh. or like tripping on acid yeah. where it's literally like someone will post a picture of their hand with the caption, holy shit. And like, because oh all the people God. who are posting it on it are all like right. tripping on acid. Yeah. Okay, I need to follow this right now. <laughs> it's just like so a tree. Fun. And they're like, you ever thought about that? And you're like, what? Oh. No, but everyone in the comments is like, no, I haven't. <laughs> yes. Oh my, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And so subreddits, uh, subreddits are managed by moderators, mods for short. They're volunteers who edit the appearance of a particular subreddit, uh, dictate what types of content are allowed in the sub, and even remove posts or content or ban users from the subreddit. On the subreddits I've ever been on, I do feel like the moderators take their job more seriously than anyone mm -hmm. I've ever seen take a job. Like they will be like, they remove so much and they're like, this is not verified. We're reaching out right now to authorities to make sure this yeah. is correct information. And I'm like, wow. So sometimes I will share a piece of information. My girlfriend will be like, where did you get that? I'm like, read it. But I'm positive it's true. Like, mm -hmm. I am 100%. And I'm sure it isn't. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I feel really trusting in these moderators. Do you have a moderator on Am I the Asshole? Like, your um, hot, two hot takes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, started, I started my own subreddit because I'm like, a lot of people on the podcast wanted advice or wanted to write in, but they didn't want to put it on like the big subreddits yeah and so started ours and now now people keep taking stories off my own subreddit for their voiceover so i'm like ah yeah but yeah i have one moderator and then i have um, a google form that i need to go through and have more join is that where people just submit their am i the their application to oh. be my moderator of course yeah, yeah. it's Incredible. like it's very to get on a big sub like am i the asshole i think it's like really intense yeah and those moderators definitely take their job yeah way too seriously and ruin my life most days because I'll see this amazing story and then of course go to try to find it and it's been removed and then there's other ways on the internet to try to get it but sometimes you can't mm -hmm. do you do they remove it because it's inappropriate or because they're like it isn't true um it could be an an abundance of reasons am I the asshole has a very strict rule guide so mm -hmm. if you go onto the first page oh, of wow. the sub they're like rule number one must be truthful rule number three can't bully Rule mm -hmm. number seven, blah, blah, so. And you th do you think most Am I the Asshole stories are true? I believe that because I know what people have done in my real life and <laughs> it's crazier than anything I've ever read. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah. you know. I feel like a lot of, whenever there's like a popular like post that goes viral a lot of the comments are like this never happened but just yeah thinking about like the crazy things that I've experienced in my life like I dated a guy who didn't have a dryer so he would nail wet clothes to his wall like he would with a hammer and nails each time and he'd make new holes and so like I, I was the like hell? I this personally <laughs> happened but if I said that to someone they on like a, a they'd be like no they'd that didn't happen you. I'd be like I have pictures you know like when your phone like creates like a montage yeah where it's just like here's your 2015 and then it's like Ah, nah, 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 nah. And then just like, you know, a selfie and then holes in this guy's wall okay. where his like landlord is like asking for pictures of what the hell you did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you need to insert that on the YouTube video. Well, I mean, I will, yes, <laughs> I'll send it to Hannah, but I, I need to see it. I need to see it right now. It's and just I bet that landlord learned his lesson and got a dryer for that apartment. Yeah. He's like, it's never... his own fault. Yeah. <laughs> That I'm my it is. Yeah. ex was stupid. I'll blame the landlord and no matter what, mm -hmm. no matter what the situation, yep. it's all yeah, yeah. fault. That is true. Um, so Redditors tend to talk in abbreviations. Some common abbreviations include OP, original poster, TIL, today I learned, I am slash, well, I am a slash AMA, ask me anything. So it's like you, hey guys, um, if Morgan were to go on two hot takes and she posts like, ask me anything, people would ask Morgan, what's your shoe size? You know, what's your address? Seven. Yes. To both. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Address and shoe size is seven. Seven, Los Angeles, California. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> There's the homepage, the front page. You can sort po um, posts by best, hot, new, top, or rising. 
and Reddit is also governed by admins. So we're just going to run through some notable subreddits. The most viewed subreddits include r slash am I the asshole, where people, I don't know if we explain this, people go on there and they post a story of like what's happening in their personal life and they ask everyone, do I sound like the asshole in this situation? Mm -hmm. And then there's r slash ask Reddit, r slash world news. Um, so... Do you want to go into the history of r slash am I the asshole? I would love to. And I appreciate you saying that because I was, you're reading this and I kept trying to jump in to read and I was just scrolling up and down being like, I have absolutely no idea where we're at. I'm so sorry. History on am I the asshole. On June 8th, 2013, the am I the asshole subreddit was created. AITA's goal was to provide users with an honest accounting of their behavior and actionable feedback on how to improve it. The subreddit was created by photographer and dog rescuer Mark Bullock. Is that how you say it? Do you know? I have no idea. That's I'm not new Mark. to me. Mark Bullock, maybe. To determine whether he had been the asshole in a particular situation, Bullock asked whether he had been inappropriately mansplaining in a debate with a female coworker about the temperature of their office. The subreddit gained popularity in 2018. Okay, other users can judge posts with the ratings of YTA, you're the asshole, NTA, not the asshole. N-A-H, no asshole here. E-S-H, everyone sucks here. How often do you see uh, everyone sucks here? Uh, I'd say 15% of the time. Mm -hmm. And there's a new one that we talk about on my podcast. It's not on the official one yet, but you'll see it come up sometimes where it's justified asshole. Where, mm -hmm. yeah, that person definitely was being an asshole, but based on the situation, it's justified. Yeah. yeah. Do you so. have any justified asshole stories from your life? Oh, yeah. 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 Kendall? Oh, yeah. Do we have any examples off the top of the dome? <laughs> I absolutely cannot <laughs> share, but I, I do. I feel like I I will say I am. I hate confrontation, which I'm working mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, I will let people walk all over me in a way that is so alarming that if I've ever in my life been an asshole, I'm almost positive it's justified. Yeah. Like if I've ever snapped at someone or been like, had a bad phone call that was pretty yeah. intense. I'm like, what would make me bring me to that place mm -hmm. would be have to be so crazy that like they have to be in the wrong, which I yeah. know and yeah. usually I've thought it through, but I, I would rather, even if someone was like, I killed your whole family, I would still be like, the thought of calling them and confronting them makes me want to like throw up. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going after them with a knife. Yeah. Maybe that's a bad example. If someone killed my whole family, I'd probably, uh, probably it, not call yeah. them for in the first place. It, it'd come out. Yeah. I would be very mad. But they have to do something really bad. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty non confrontational. I, um, my thing that comes to my mind is in college, you know, like when you share a laundry room. Mm. And okay, so like there was this person who kept like every time I did laundry, they'd take the wet clothes out and put them on the floor. I, Oh my and God. so, but that they would <laughs> use my time on the on the washer, so I would take their clothes out and throw them away, like I while had, they were like wet. Because yes. I was that's where I feel like that was a dick move, but I also felt justified in it. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I had to. I would say that's very appropriate. Mm -hmm. Laundry people who get mad in the laundry room. Yeah, really piss me off because mm -hmm. sometimes I'm just like be. Patient. If you because I've gone up there and this is where I can work on it. Obviously, an hour too long to leave your clothes in the in the washer. Yeah. But I feel like people will be waiting for it to like turn to yeah. zero, and yeah. then they're just taking your clothes out and putting them on a table. And I yeah. Think you have to chill out. You mm -hmm. have to chill. Out. That's why yeah. I always have to stay. If I do use like a laundromat. But I remember one time uh, when I lived in Virginia, the building that I lived in, they had the laundry in the basement. And I was doing laundry one time, and this girl comes in in a bikini, and she starts doing her laundry. And I'm like, I get it, laundry day. And <laughs> yeah. she's like, what? And I was like, the bikini. And she's like, I just wear this. And I was like, what? Oh. I was like, I get that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just do you feel like you're confrontational usually? Like, do you think there's moments you've been an asshole, and you're like, oh, I was just an asshole? I think it's like very much accidental because the neurodivergency of yeah. where like um, a lot of people are trying to be mean to me. And so I like just ask them what they said back or like I say, I'm like, can I get this straight? And they're like, why are you being so rude? I'm like, this is what you just said to me. I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, I love that. But I'm not like super. I mean, I'd have to when it comes to like friends, I'm not super confrontational. But if it's a stranger, I do not care. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Except with men. With men, I just, I'm they're too scared cards. that they're going to yeah. punch me in the face you know, that I'm like. In New York, I was much more, when I lived, I lived in New York for yeah. like six years and I, that gave me a lot of, a newer confidence. Like when I, when I was in New York, I felt like I would yell at someone on the street mm. if they like 
did something that pissed me off. And yeah. I would never do that in LA. But in New York, it just feels like that's what we all do. We all just scream at each other and flip yeah. each other off. But that's normal yeah. and that's fine. And working at a restaurant, mm-hmm. I think I had like a new, co- like, because I just dealt with so many terrible people constantly that yeah. I would be more comfortable being like, okay, then you can get out of my restaurant. But it was yeah. like a new, it was like a totally new personality. I was like, who is this? I've never been like this in my entire life. Yeah. Um, the only person I've fought publicly recently <laughs> is... Just fought? Oh, no. These two girls. And you think about the girls' bathroom, and the girls' bathroom is usually so iconic for being friendly and, oh, my God, let's be friends, follow each other on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And you never talk to them again. You like each other's posts. Yeah. It's great. But this one night, we were down in, like, Venice, Santa Monica area at this bar. And it was an Irish bar, so maybe people were just a little more unhinged that day. And... These two girls were so mean and they were like mocking everyone in the stalls, everyone talking. And I was just like, hey, like, can you guys stop? Like, you're actually kind of being bitches. Yeah. And they wanted to fight me. (gasps) Like, they started going at and they're like, fuck you. You're a bitch. You blah, blah, blah. You're so gross and fat and this and that. And I was like, I was like, you have a problem. Yeah. And then they're like, you have a problem. I'm like, no, you have a problem. We're just going back (laughs) and forth. And I'm like, I was honestly, I was scared though the rest of the night. I'm like, I hope I don't run into them again. And then they literally like, we went in the bar and they came up to me in the bar and started screaming at me in the bar too. I'm like, no, you guys are unhinged. Yeah. Unhinged. Unacceptable. It is disgusting. It's just like, this is not girl bathroom code. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. So. Oh man. I hate that. Yeah. That's terrible. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or your computer. I am so excited because this week I'm going to New York City with my girlfriend for their birthday. We're going to see Broadway shows. We're going to do all the fun New York City things. But as you guys know, traveling is very expensive. And sometimes as the costs rise and the prices are hitting your bank account, the vacation becomes a little less fun. So Honey has really saved my life on this trip. I mean, it has saved me money on all my travel essentials, even on things like hotels. It is truly incredible. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free, that's right, I said free, shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it can find to your cart. Imagine, you're shopping on one of your favorite websites When you check out, the Honey button appears, and oh yeah, all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You guys, it's incredible. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you will watch the prices drop, and you will be able to just enjoy your vacation to New York City, and you'll be able to kiss your girlfriend and not be thinking in your head, oh my God, we're going to have to to sell our car when we get home. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Folks, if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash bcc. That's joinhoney.com slash bcc. You know, I can't see you, but I just know that once or twice in your life, you've had a very weird medical condition that you cannot explain. And you're trying to find the cause for your symptoms. You know, maybe you have a full body rash that's concentrated around the knees, neck, armpits, and groin. Is that just me? And you stumble down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts. Newsflash, they're just people who bought a lab coat. You can get them at any thrift store. There are better ways to get the answers you want and the care you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet like me who got a lab coat from a thrift store. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Surprise twists might work for podcasts, but maybe not for medical care. I actually did also find my primary care physician through ZocDoc, and I actually have had a full body rash. Turns out there was just too much scent in my laundry detergent, and I stopped using it because my skin is incredibly sensitive. That's also what my dermatologist says. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. Browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. I would strongly recommend it. I love my PCP. 
Go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. Let's get into some Am I the Asshole post to review, though. I'm so excited. I know. I'm so excited. We're going to play God. Okay, so do we click? Do I just click? Just one? go. Yeah, the, the link. One? I'm gonna. Can I read the first one and then you do the second one? Of course. Should I just like have it pulled up? Or no, you just read it. All right. Yeah. Great. So this one is a bit long. Am I the asshole for forcing out my roommates? Roommate and I lived together for four years prior to this. We were casual friends. We had different hobbies and interests, but would try to do something together about once a month, get dinner, see a movie, etc. Rumi is unlucky in love. In the four years we've been together, he's broken off two engagements. For one of these girls, I went pretty out of my way to get them together. Think lending large amounts of money and agreeing to vacate the premise a few nights. Anyway, it didn't work out. He paid me back all the money with the exception of about 60 bucks, which I shrugged off as water under the bridge. Finally, he gets his last girlfriend. I'm happy for him. Everything is great. Then he moves her in. He tells me that he's having a friend over for dinner one day, and I happily agree that she never goes, um, and then she never goes home. It's fine. They're in their honeymoon period, except two weeks go by and she's still here. At this point, I sit him down and say she can't live here. It's annoying and also violates our lease. He says that her apartment is old and not as clean as that he and not as clean and that he needs to take care of her. I say sucks to be her. That's the apartment she decided to rent. He says fine. So starting from that talk, she lives here, except she goes home at midnight and shows up at eight in the morning. Weekend, she stays over. I hate this. She monopolizes the bathroom in the morning. Her hair clogs the shower drain. They're using the kitchen and the shared living spaces all the time, including the TV. And every time I try to use any of the spaces, they stop cuddling, talking, slash whatever, and stare at me until I leave. I get so uncomfortable that I become a hermit in my room. One day I come home and she has five suitcases in our living room. Finally, after over two months of this, I tell him that I'm going to report him to our landlord. His response is to move out and find a subletter, which is also not allowed. I could report this, but I decide I don't care as long as his share of the rent keeps coming in. He also tries to take half my furniture on the way out, which I wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't come home early and found his friends carting off my table. Fast forward to today, who could have possibly seen this coming? This girl breaks up with him and now he wants to be friends again. I sent him a text saying that he's a shit friend for fucking me over for two months and we're through unless he apologizes. He responds saying that I'm immature, that adults understand that couples have different needs, that threatening to report him was way out of line and I was being a dick about it the whole time. He says I basically forced him to move out. He references my mother who is chronically ill and whom I sometimes drop everything to care for when she needs a hospital stay saying that if I needed to move her and to take care of me, he wouldn't have complained. This is completely hypothetical. I have literally never mentioned moving her in. And it was the same for his girlfriend because he needed to take care of her. I say, fuck you, and that's the last time we've spoken. Am I the asshole? Mm. No. Ooh. <laughs> I am torn on this one. I am, actually. Really? I am also, I am also I, torn. I'm, I'm leaning towards not the asshole, but... But also, I just feel like everyone sucks. Like, yeah. he is so annoying. You couldn't have communicated to your friend a little better and, like, I'm going to report you to the landlord. Mm -hmm. Grow up. It's giving a little, like, I had a roommate who would, like, send, like, would never speak to us and would send an email, like, once every month. Oh. Basically, just a list of everything we were doing wrong. That's aggressive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where I was like, just tell me. It would be so normal to just be like, hey guys, can we do the dishes yeah. a little? Like when we do it, this is how I like things done. But it would be like, she was so fine. And then mm -hmm. it was like so intense. And I feel like it feels a little bit, I think I'm definitely more on his side. I think he yeah. didn't yeah. In initially do anything wrong, but I think he didn't, it didn't seem like he communicated really oh, yeah. well, you know? No. I accidentally said that he's the asshole. I don't think he's the asshole at all. I think that really is annoying. Uh, my least favorite thing is like an uncomfortable living situation, especially like when you monopolize yeah. The living room, I understand that he should have communicated better, but like they should also be self aware. I've definitely overstayed my welcome at like an ex's house, yeah. but I was very aware of the space I was taking up. Like if I were to do my makeup, it's not in the bathroom, it's in front of a mirror on in my partner's room, or like I just, I don't, I know that I don't live there, so I wouldn't feel comfortable spreading out like oh, that. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. the same way. I'm the same way. I'm very aware of like, 
am I using your space too much? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if OP were to get a partner, like maybe you would want your partner there the same amount of time and then it would be more even. But I think there's a conversation where it's like, hey, if she's going to be here all the time, she needs to start paying rent. Yeah, that's what I think. Or like, you know what? We only have one bathroom and like, sucks that she doesn't have the greatest place but it would i would appreciate it if you would go over there some nights like there's got to be a better balance yeah honestly my dad is the same way my dad has a girlfriend and i live at home still currently 29 it's okay it's okay (laughs) and his girlfriend lives in this place in la that's like notorious for cockroaches and rats so Uh she's had her apartment like exterminated probably six or seven times since i've known her in two years yeah and he doesn't want to stay over there so she comes over every night and stays at our place and so i get like where you're like i just want my own space i just want a little bit of my own room Mm -hmm. i want to be able to cook a meal in the kitchen and not have you guys in there trying to cook too yeah Mm -hmm. but i think there was an easier way to have a conversation versus like it sounds like you're a good friend yeah and you burned the bridge and like friend does suck so not the asshole but yeah it just seems like really immature. Speaking of your dad and his girlfriend. Oh yeah, you met them. I did. Um, Morgan had her birthday party the other week, and um, thank I you. thank you. This was like, he was he's such a nice guy, and so yeah, is he's she. Great. Um, I asked to smoke, and he your dad was like, yeah, just go out in the balcony. But the balcony is through the kitchen, and so like <laughs> I um, went to like go there, and so I saw your dad and his girlfriend just like kissing. And so I just every but like I so I was like oh you know what I'm gonna back up so I come back like five oh minutes no. later and they are making out again and I was or like still. Ah! I was like I like I walked in I was like oh sorry again so I just like kept going back out and they were still kissing in their house obviously they can do that <laughs> but like I just like I I think they might have seen me a couple of times like oh are they still you know but I was and just probably t- later were like. My friend Sarah is super creepy. Yeah, we're no, out and we no. kept looking at my each other. My dad is the most unaware <laughs> dude. He wouldn't. He wouldn't even notice. Oh, thank God! That's I was. So I was. I was like, I know this is their house, so I'm not gonna. But I just felt like you I was just, just kept showing by. up. Just. Oh no! It was the chair was like blocking the. Oh, so I would have had to climb over <laughs> them as a couple. Oh yeah, and then oh, I'd no. be the asshole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. then we'd all everyone in it would be. Where's the one that's like nobody's an asshole. NTA. NTA, yeah. nobody's mm, nah. the asshole. But we would see a post. Oh, N-A-H, sorry. Yeah, no yeah. assholes here. Mm. We would see a post from mm-hmm. Morgan's dad like, am I the asshole for asking my daughter's friend to stop climbing over me to smoke? <laughs> you know? You're safe. He doesn't yeah, know how yeah. to use Reddit. Um, I think it's so hard. Once again, I'm very new to the am I the asshole post. But mm-hmm. I think I feel like it's always hard for me because obviously reading that, I am like, he's not the asshole. Yeah. But I'm also always like, but he's the one telling this story. You know what I mean? So I think mm. that's always so hard for me because I'm like, I feel like I have roommates in the past that would tell a story about, like roommates that I look back and are like, well, they were crazy. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. And then I, if they talked about me, I would be like, this is an insane way to explain these events. Yeah. I, yeah. I, that's so not what happened. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. I absolutely have that with one of my college roommates. She had a boyfriend senior year and they were inseparable. And it was one of those apartment buildings where they had, like, vents, like, big metal vents like this that connected the room. So I heard everything. I heard every single time they were intimate and just... (laughs) Yeah. All all the time, just nonstop. Yeah. But they capitalized on everything. Like, they would wake up at 7 in the morning and cook together. And then after classes, they'd come home and watch Chop together. And he lived there. It literally felt like this story. Like, he lived there. And I would be like, okay, we have three other people here. Like, this is getting annoying. So my revenge was coming after the bar and we'd A-bar at my place and be up at 3 a.m. Just mm-hmm. rowdy as yeah. fuck. Which for her, she's getting up at, you know, 7, 8 to cook breakfast. Yeah. Ruined her life. And we would get into screaming matches after, like, the bar. And I had people there and people were like, you guys are nuts. How are you living together? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, if Alex were to talk about me, like, we're still friends now. Yeah. But if she yeah. were to tell the story, I'm like... She would say I was a nightmare. Yeah. And yeah. then in my version, I'm like, she was a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. But there's just some friends that you cannot live with. Like, oh, yeah. great. You can be the best of friends, but roommates, you'll be terrible. Yeah. yeah. And I always was, because I grew up with a lot of siblings. And then I, in New York, would have like 10, I feel like 10 roommates at a time. Like, you always yeah. had so many roommates. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, there, and I think what comes with having a lot of roommates is just like so much patience and so much like, well, nothing's going to be perfect. And I don't, I cannot expect to have a, silent house at midnight like yeah. there's just there's things I can't get when I have this many roommates and ever so often there'd be a roommate that just like 
pretty much wanted to live alone, Mm -hmm. but you had to be like, you don't live alone. You can't, you can't make this perfect for yourself. Like all of us, I'm sleeping in a twin bed next to someone and their boyfriend snores so loud and he's this close to my face and I have to hit him with my stuffed animal every 10 minutes. So we'll stop snoring. Like, it's not perfect. You know, you just have to like roll with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What um is the top comment on that one? What like what did everyone else say? The top uh, comment is uh, good on you for having principles and sticking to them. If he can't even see where he stepped at a line, I say good riddance. Okay, so yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you guys are on track. Yeah, yeah. I feel like sometimes I, I don't let the comments influence me, but it does like make me sometimes think about things I didn't consider, mm-hmm. like with these stories. So I'm always so intrigued. But yeah, like if you're initially like. He's the asshole, and then all the comments are like, think about it this way. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, actually. Yeah. yeah. They can whip your vote, like yeah. sway it. Mm-hmm. Okay, should we do the next one? Yeah. Okay, I'll read this one. The I accidentally locked my mother-in-law in the basement. Okay, yeah. Oh, my God. I love mother-in-law Reddit. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole if I accidentally locked my mother-in-law in the basement for a while? We moved out of the house because my mother-in-law keeps on showing up uninvited. Now she's visited us for a week, and she's all up on our face all the time. My wife and I don't have time for each other anymore. Not at all, to be honest. So earlier today, she was in our basement trying to look for our old button-up shirt. Don't ask why. She thought it was in our basement of our house, miles away from hers. It was her old button-up shirt. I'm so Mm. sorry. (laughs) Um, She asked if I could join her down there in case she needs a hand. So I did. Helped in all. My wife was about to leave for work, so I went up to lock the front door. My mother-in-law slammed the basement door on me for not wanting to help her. The door got stuck. I'm now in the living room watching TV. She's asking to be let out. I think I'll let her stay there for a while. She's not senile. She's just about 50 years old. She can manage for a while. This person (laughs) is the asshole. Yeah. um, This is, like, abusive. Well, I mean, is (laughs) it it justified, though? Is it justified, asshole? Is it considered kidnapping or, like, um, what's it called when you... uh, you, Hostage? You lock someone in your house or, like, you don't let them leave? I think that's kidnapping, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I think, I mean, we... Uh, mother-in-law stories are always annoying and it is annoying that she's visited for a week but you can't just like sentence her to to the basement (laughs) you know Mm -mm. I do think maybe neither of them are the full out I think he might be uh, I don't know (laughs) <laughs> yeah, dangerous. He's, a, he's, he's an, an asshole, ass- but he seems unacceptable. I think the wife might be the villain in this. That's literally stole the words out of my mouth. Uh-huh. The wife needs to set some boundaries with her mom. Yeah, it's time. This is ridiculous. You mm-hmm. couldn't get away from her, and then now she's at your house for a week. Yeah, and she lives in the same town. Yeah, go home. Uh-huh. That's where I'm like, oh, I know he's the asshole, hundred percent. But yeah. I'm like, is it a little justified? Like. The mother-in-law is the one that slammed the door because mm-hmm. she was pouting because she, she wanted help finding oh, that's her true. button up. So I'm like, you slammed the door. You're the one acting like a toddler. Like, I guess he could just be like, I didn't hear that. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't know you were locked down. I know. Well, then it's like if you leave her down there for 45 minutes, okay, that's mm-hmm. a little crazy. But like maybe two minutes? <laughs> yeah. Let her, just, let her just sweat a little. Yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe she won't want to stay at your house any longer, mm-hmm. yeah. which would be good. But the wife definitely needs to like, grow a spine and yes. draw some boundaries mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's a lot of people like that especially on reddit i mean there's this term called enmeshment where mm-hmm. you just have an unhealthy relationship with your parents or a parent mm-hmm. and there's so much and usually you see it on reddit with moms and sons yeah yeah i mean there's even a, to- a like a a subreddit called like toxic mother-in-law yeah or just no mother-in-law And it's full of stories about, like, moms. And you see it on TikTok, too, like, boy mom TikTok, where it's, like, there's one mom on there that's pretty popular and had a video recently where she was, like, raising a son is, like, slowly falling out of love or slowly losing your partner. No, I saw this. It was, like, I – it might be the same one where she was, like – it's just, like, her walking, holding hands with her, like, three-year-old son. Mm -hmm. And she's, like, someone once said, raising a son is the biggest heartbreak you'll ever go through. And I'm, like – or, like, the longest, like, a yes. slow 18-year heartbreak. Yeah. And yes. I was like, man. Same one. Like, no, this is your child. This isn't your partner. Yeah. And a lot of people forget that. And so there's a lot of enmeshed mom boy stories where, mm-hmm. like, am I the asshole for inviting my mom on our honeymoon? Yeah. And it's like, are, are you yeah. really asking that? You're out yeah. of your mind. You think your mom belongs on your honeymoon? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. What? It's crazy. But these stories are always so hard, too, because I'm like, if the mom told the story, she could also... Also, these are all assumptions I'm making, but she could be like, 
my daughter and her husband do not have their life together. So every single day I come over and I do all their laundry and I clean their house and I take care of their child. And then yeah. he locked me in a basement because he hates me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, you know, it's always so hard to know. But he shouldn't. He shouldn't have locked her in a basement at the end of the day. You should never falsely imprison your mother-in-law unless <laughs> she's attacking you. It's a tale as old as time. Oh, we, yeah. We do have another Am I the Asshole? Why are these so? My God, this is long. All right. Am I the Asshole for having a better wedding than my sister-in-law? <laughs> I'm a casual Reddit browser, but I've never engaged the community before because I, whatever. I, 29 female <laughs> from a middle class family and have an older. That's like when someone starts a TikTok off with, we've never seen them before. And they're like, sorry, I look like crap. And you're like, I don't know what you look like. To begin with. So th I, I didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, 29 female from a middle class family, have an older brother, 35 male. Let's call him Adrian. He is self, <laughs> he's a self-taught software engineer and makes pretty good money. A little over one year ago, he married his girlfriend, 28 female of six years. Let's call her Heather. She's not a bad person, but I think she's a little bit spoiled. She's the type that loves to brag about all the expensive stuff her husband bought her, and their wedding was pretty extravagant. She still loves to talk about how it was the most amazing wedding, sh wedding she's ever been to. To. My her brother's own wedding. I'm just clear. yes, <laughs> yeah, incredible. <laughs> My brother is kind of wrapped around her finger, finger, but it never really mattered until now. I met my fiance, 36 male, about four years ago. It was a business event. He owns a decently sized and very successful company. So saying that, he is extremely wealthy. Since he grew up less than, he loves to spend his money on things him and his family could only dream about before. One of those, one of those things is, of course, our wedding. He wants to go all out and hired a somewhat well-known wedding planner to arrange everything. Honestly, I'm pretty excited. I never dreamed of such a luxury luxurious wedding but now that it's happening it feels like i'm living some wild dream i never even dared have like textbook fairy tale recently i was at a family gathering and was hanging out in the living room with my mom and heather doing girl talk my mom started asking me how the planning was going and when i told her about everything we were doing i could see heather go pale and then extremely red in the face she was quiet for the rest of the night the next day adrian called me and said that heather was extremely upset and felt like i was trying to one-up her wedding she said i was trying to upstage her be, uh, because I never expressed desire for a fancy wedding before. He asked uh, me if I could tone it down so it doesn't exceed the budget they had for their own wedding. I laughed because honestly I couldn't believe that what I was hearing and then I naturally said no. He sounded upset and hung up. A few hours later Heather calls and she starts yelling at me repeating mostly the same stuff saying she knew I was always jealous of her and I'm only with my fiance because he's rich and I want to rub it in her face. Yeah, that's why they fell in love. Um, that, <laughs> that made me snap, and I said, if you're that obsessed with money, maybe you should have married someone else instead of my brother. <laughs> if anyone's jealous of someone, it's you. She screamed at me and started crying before hanging up. Now, Adrian is angry and calling me the asshole for insinuating she, wouldn't, she shouldn't have married him, and my parents think I was too harsh on her when I... No, she's always been material and are asking me to lower our wedding budget to appease her. I don't want to. My fiance definitely doesn't want to. But I don't know if that makes me an asshole or not. It doesn't no. make me no. the asshole. Yeah. She's not, not an asshole. Not the asshole at all. Yeah. Some people just live in a world that only revolves around them. Mm -hmm. And this person is so insecure. Like the other one. Yeah. yeah. Heather. Mm -hmm. And Adrian, the brother, like... 26 female. Yeah. So, <laughs> it makes me laugh when they so say that. So insecure. Yeah. And I don't think anyone, when they plan their wedding, they're not planning it for other people. They're planning it for themselves. Like, yeah. Heather, sweetie, you're not even a consideration in this. Yeah. No. It's not to one-up you. It's we're planning what we want for us. Mm -hmm. Do you think people... I don't know. Some people spend money for other people like yeah. to show yeah. off and be like that. But it doesn't sound like OP is... Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think anything was directed. I don't think when they're planning their wedding, they're like using your wedding as like a, this but plus 3. Yeah. You know, it had nothing to do with you. And you it's like the main character syndrome where like mm -hmm. everything has to do with me. It's like most things have nothing to do with you, Heather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just this kind of like um I I think it's like sad where it's I, I think Heather probably only like, the wedding was, like, her big life event, you mm -hmm. know? And yeah. she, like, doesn't have anything else, it seems like. Like, if her wedding was ar had already happened and she's still, like, guys, wasn't my wedding incredible? That was yeah. the best wedding I'd ever been to. You, it's like, you got to oh. move on. Nobody yeah. really cared. You know Nobody she's one of those girls that, like, posts every 
every like Valentine's Day, every anniversary, she's dishing out those wedding pills. Yeah. yeah. You, like those things are never going to get archived. But this isn't the end. Like yeah. the baby shower, when if they have kids, yeah. if they choose to do mm-hmm. that, the baby shower, we have to have the best baby shower that's ever been and no one can top our baby shower. Yeah. You can't go above our baby shower's budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, our, our anniversary party and our bap, the baptizing. Yeah. Like yeah. you can't <laughs> ever do better than us. And oh, it, it's, it's yeah. never ending with yeah. people like that. Yeah. yeah. They and convert to Catholicism just so they can have a baptism party. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, they do every religion. Yeah. yeah. So they can have like a, a bat mitzvah Christening. and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Jewish brisk yeah. Yeah. days after. I mean, yeah. you just, it's never ending and it's, it's, Nip it in the bud now and draw yeah. the boundaries. Yes. Show you're not a doormat. Mm-hmm. Do what you want for your day. Yeah. And let them yeah. let them get flustered. Yeah. The parents trying to step in. I think the son is probably the golden child. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, we just we need to make sure we don't hurt his feelings. Let's make sure he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably that dynamic. It's like this sibling OP deserves to get the good wedding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if she does lower her budget that's such that's that's such a scary precedent for the future now Mm -hmm. they're going to be like we can always Mm -hmm. tell her what to do and that's not good yeah she's a doormat yeah Yeah. have you guys ever had a situation where like it's abundantly clear that someone is mad that you're doing better than them 100 percent. really have they talked to you about it um i i have (laughs) i have there's one person my entire life that i've i've cut out of my life I'm not I don't do that ever like I've mm-hmm. never cut anyone out of my life but there's yeah. one person I cut out of my life because they were so it was like any time I it whether it was like get into a relationship with someone that was so nice and great like if I was in a bad relationship they like loved that like yeah. if I wasn't in a good one if I was in a good relationship they'd like just shit they didn't even met the person yet it would be like shit talking them saying they're toxic for me they're bad for me doesn't know yeah. anything about them if I would do anything I remember when I first went viral on TikTok they were like TikTok is so toxic like you need to get off TikTok right now like anything I did oh but then God. the second yeah. we were at a level playing field they were so nice to me and I like brought it up to them so many times I was like this really bothers me and yeah I was just like ga- I was like they would gaslight me and be like so mean and I eventually was like I can't speak to you anymore I'm so sorry yeah well, I'm actually not really sorry yeah. <laughs> and my life has been energy. incredible since <laughs> There's people like that. Like, I was friends with a girl that she always felt like we would get in these fights. And it was always around guys. Like, she was a very typical Mm pick-me. Like, any time we were around a group of guys, she'd talk about how much she loved getting her bin mucked. Yeah. Like, it was... Like, ass-eaten? Yeah, what is that? I've never heard of Bin mucked? Like, getting eaten out. Oh, Oh, okay. It's, like, it's in the hockey world. So, I'm from Minnesota. Oh. And, like, all the hockey guys are like, oh, I love mucking bin. It's like, ugh. even saying it out loud, I'm like, yeah. kill me. I've never kill me. That. It sounds very British. It's, <laughs> it does sound British. Yeah. I want to muck your bin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. And so she would always bring, like, this stuff up. And we went on spring break, and she texted my boyfriend, who I was flying from Florida to Canada, to go stay with for the second half of spring break. While we were in Florida, she texted him and was like, Morgan cheated on you. What? Never happened. Like, Whoa. literally complete lie and I literally flew to Canada and he didn't talk to me for five hours I sat at the airport for five hours and I was like texting other friends that were there I was like hey um I think my boyfriend died can you yeah. come get me I mean I like I'm in Edmonton yeah like Alberta Whoa. I had one other friend there like it was crazy so he eventually told me that she had texted him that but she would always say like I feel like you're competing with me I feel like you're competing with me I'm projecting like, I'm like, I'm not competing with you at all. Like yeah. we are very yeah. we're two very different people. And we ended up like it got even crazier where I flew out from Minnesota to Texas where she moved to with uh-huh. a friend of mine. And in order to keep my friend away from me all weekend so she could get close to her, she took my friend's phone and hid it <gasps> in a guy's Ooh, suit yeah. pocket yeah. at a house party they went to. What? And like literally left me at her house. Cause I had a bad trip from Molly. So I needed to leave uh-huh. and I was at her house and I was like, Hey, can I take your car to Walmart to go get a book? Yeah. No, she didn't have Wi-Fi. Wouldn't let me take her car. I sat at her apartment all by myself while she kept my friend away from me. Yeah. Twiddling my thumbs. What it was the most unhinged thing. Yeah. I know. And that was the last like time that. I talked to her. And I feel like people like that too. It's like, they don't even care. They're like, I know everyone in this situation is mad at me, but I don't care because if I, as long as I get what I want, I don't care. If everyone hates me, as long as I get what I want, it's, like, so bizarre and scary and sad. I feel bad for them. You do feel bad because it's, like, why do you feel the need to act like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, we, like, you just, 
you have to realize at a certain point because like I loved her. It was sad. Like yeah. I envisioned her being a bridesmaid. Yeah. Like I think that's kind of like a standard of like friends where it's like Same, we're yeah. so close. Like yeah. I can see you standing by me on my wedding day. Yeah. And it was really tough to like realize like I don't deserve to be dealing with this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's hard to cut out friends. It's worse than breaking up a lot of times. Yeah. Am I the asshole for accusing my sister of lying about being a lesbian? My sister is always... My sister was always a tomboy, and she made it very clear, very young, that she was into girls. She didn't even have to come out, and as she's been talking about her girl crushes since middle school. She has a really close best friend, Ben, who is always allowed to come over and even sleep at her house because our parents viewed him as just a friend. Meanwhile, I was never allowed to have boys over. Their relationship was always a bit suspicious to me because they were always very close physically, play wrestling with each other and such. She is 19 now, attending the same college as Ben, And they even lived together as roommates, in quotes. They were roommates. (laughs) She came home last weekend and announced that Ben and her are dating now. Our parents were really surprised, but they didn't say anything. I pulled her aside to ask what's up. I see two options. She's not into Ben, but suddenly decided to use him as a beard and go back into the closet or for some mysterious reason. Or two, she was always into him, and they've been secretly dating all this time, and she purposefully lied to our parents to be able to spend more time with Ben. She said this... She said that she didn't lie. She needed time to figure out her sexuality and coming to terms with her bisexuality when everyone treated her like a lesbian since she was eight didn't make it easy for her. She also said that if I have a problem with our parents not letting me have boys over, I need to take it up with them, not her. Then she treated me like shit the whole rest of the weekend. I think asking her what's going on was an absolutely fair question and her reaction is overboard. But on the other hand, I'm straight and I have no clue what is, um, how it is to grow up openly lesbian slash closeted by. Am I the asshole? So her sister said that she was a lesbian. Well, like explicitly? It seems like no, but I mean, I, it seems like yeah. her parents were like, she's a lesbian. It feels a little backwards. It feels like almost like she was put into a box, like from yeah. a very yes. young age, just from like being a tomboy and talking about girl crushes, which doesn't every little kid, like I have a five-year-old niece who like has a boyfriend and mm-hmm. um, all the girls have crushes on her too. Like it's little kids talking. So yeah. Yeah. it is kind of weird that the parents almost seem to like put her in that box yeah. for her. Yeah, at no point did she say that her sister said that she was a lesbian. She was a tomboy. Um, her parents said that like she just was treated like a lesbian. <laughs> Um, she never denied, like, she, uh, they didn't include anything about Ben, and, like, maybe they did start off as friends, yeah. that's fine, and, like, um, uh, I don't know, so, like. But also, she, honestly, if she, even if she did identify as a lesbian, even if her whole childhood she was like, I'm gay, and I'm super gay, and then she went to college, and she, like, her and Ben randomly fell in love with each other, I'm like, yeah, that happens, that's none of the sister's business, it really has, like, I think sometimes, I know for me, like, I've been out as a lesbian for quite a while, like, since I was, I mean, pretty young, Mm -hmm. 17 years old. And, like, two years into being out, there was, like, a guy at the restaurant I worked at who I randomly was like, wait, I, like, have a crush on this guy. I've, like, never had a crush since him and before him. (laughs) Never had a crush on any guy. And I was like, what is happening? And I, like, really tried to be like, you know, I'm not going to, like, put myself in a box, Mm -hmm. like, what if this is like who I meant to be with and it ended up, I ended up being like, wait, actually, this is gross. I'm, I think I'm a lesbian. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, I know that they're kids, but I think this is my personal opinion. You should be um, more sure that you are a lesbian if you declare it. Because there is, it's um, because lesbians are so fetishized and there is that, you know, oh, I, just a certain man can turn you. So I think if you're going to say that you, she never did say she was a lesbian. Personally, if you're going to say you are a lesbian, I, I mean, you, people can still be figuring themselves out. However, there is a lot riding on using that term um, that could affect lesbians. But for this one, I feel like she was just prescribed lesbian. And I mean, I don't I mean, if you think you are genuinely think you are a lesbian and then, you know, you realize you're attracted to a man. I mean, I'm not going to be like, hey, now, excuse me. Pretty. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, her sister is just way too into her business. So the fact that she oh, wore yeah. cargo pants, she's like gay, <laughs> you know. And also the thing is, if, like her sister might be gay. Yeah. Her sister's like obsessed <laughs> with gay. Co- she's yeah. like, what are you wearing? Yeah. Lesbian. She's known since she was eight what a lesbian <laughs> looks like. But um, no, I also get like it's so annoying that she got mad at her sister for that. The fact that Ben got to stay over and yeah. she could never have boys over. Like my sister was the golden child. But like even when I was younger, I wasn't like, hey, 
you mom treats you well so you need to tell her to treat me well it's like i, I knew that if i was gonna ever have the nads to demand that i'd have to go to my mom because my yeah. sister wouldn't be like mom can you stop locking sarah in the closet <laughs> and i'd be like thank you from the closet but it's muffled thank you Hina. You're sitting up for me. No, but um, yes. Yeah, the so, basement story was written in by yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah like, it's actually my Sarah's mother-in-law <laughs> was locked in the closet for looking for a shirt, aka asking for food at the dinner table. No, no. but um, I think your the sister is the asshole in this situation. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It sounds like there's almost some like bi erasure happening too, yeah. where it's like, no, 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 no. You're actually just straight now like yeah quit pretending to be a lesbian yeah and it's like i think you said it so well kendall we were like a lot of times we put people in these boxes too and it's like i don't know why there's such an obsession with other people's gender identity and sexuality Mm -hmm. how does it affect you if it doesn't fuck off yeah let people be happy like it is so hard to be happy so if any of those things that's unusual for you makes them happy let them fucking do it. Yeah. Like, people are so yeah. weird about that. And I do feel like I've always been like, well, I was pretty lucky because I was so cut and dry lesbian besides that one guy that worked at my restaurant <laughs> who I was like, what's happening? Yeah. But I've always, like, since I was a little girl, I knew I was gay. Yeah. And then I just got to, like, come out at 18 and always was gay. And I, I am, like, I think there's so many people where it's so much more complicated than that. But it seems like she also was, like, I'm bisexual. And her sister was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah, a yeah. lesbian because I said when you were eight years old that you are. Mm-hmm. It's And it's so weird. I don't get like why it almost feels like they sexualized her as a kid like yeah. oh you're eight and you have girl crushes you're a lesbian yeah where it's almost like they like sexualized her and I've seen on TikToks where there's been moms that are like I hope I get a gay son who's my bestie and yeah. it's like what the <laughs> fuck crazy. are you yeah. doing like why are you so weird Just yeah. yeah let your kid be a kid yeah mm-hmm. like you're not that's not your partner like just chill it's so out. To say that. Yeah, your kid is not your husband. Yeah, please. <laughs> Am I the asshole for saying I really ad- enjoyed an adult-only resort to my brother? Okay, in front of my niece and nephew. I, thirty female, went on my honeymoon recently. My brother was really interested in the resort I went to. How I planned out my flights, the transfer to the resort, and stuff. So I was telling him about it. We were sitting in his living room. My niece was playing with her toys, and my nephew was playing with his switch near us. I really liked the resort, so I was saying some pretty nice things about it. And then my brother says that he's been thinking of going on holiday to the Maldives as well. So we'd keep this resort in mind. This is where things went wrong. I went to an adult-only resort as if they don't accept guests younger than 18. Um, As in they don't accept guests younger than 18. I told him this. He gets really quiet and I'm sitting there thinking, fuck, what did I say? My brother was upset that I'm the one of... My brother was upset that I'm one of those people that support banning children from public spaces. (laughs) I don't think a private resort qualifies as a public space. That's what they added which is apparently what I'm supporting by giving my money and going there. He said he expected it from other people, but not from me. This is because I've always jumped to babysit niece and nephew, and I love spending time with them. They have their moments, but they were, are, they were super sweet kids. But because I like kids, why would I go to a place like that being the gist of the problem? Why would I go to a place like that? Okay, whatever. Um, he also is pretty upset that I said it while niece and nephew were in the room, but I don't think they were even listening to us. Nephew was eight and he was playing with his Switch and there's nothing that can distract him when he's playing his games. And niece is three, enough said. But my brother still hasn't spoken to me since that day. I normally see my niece and nephew minimum once a week, but he hasn't replied to my messages. When I asked if I could come over to see them, my mom says he's just being sensitive about it and if I ignore it, it'll blow over soon. I'm a little confused. <laughs> She just said she's going to an adult resort. She went to one and she enjoyed it. And then she said no people under 18. And he was like, whoa. How that dare you? My kids How couldn't go. You? I'm like, is there a part missing where she like slapped him in the face? Because that like makes no sense to me why she, yeah. he would be upset by that. He's jealous. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of people that I'm not saying they don't love being parents. But there's definitely, I mean, there's subreddits too where it's like resentful parents. Like I totally regret becoming a parent. Mm-hmm. and. I think he's totally projecting and is just jealous that he doesn't get that experience of like going to a resort and being kid free and having that intimate time. The Maldives with kids sounds like a nightmare. Go to Disneyland. Yeah. Your kids are eight and three. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do in the Maldives? Yeah. They're not going to go see Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Like get real. When I was younger, my uh, parents, you ever, okay, sorry. My parents, when they wanted to go on like another honeymoon, like after their, they got married, 
uh, we were like very young and um, they were going on a trip and I was like, can I come? And they were like, we're going to a place where they eat white people. And I was like, oh, what? And so me, my brother and my sister are like, oh. And so we were like, mom, dad. You're white. Why are you going? No, they're going to eat you. And so they were like, I'm sorry. Like, we just. And I, so I know wow. now that they would not like they, they oh came back. God. But like the entire week <laughs> they, they obviously were gone. came back. Yeah. <laughs> the entire week they were gone. I was just like scared shitless. Mom and dad are going to be eaten. And the thing is, is like, I understand if you want to just like tell your kids something so they'll stop asking. But it they do that. It, they just made us worry. There's so many other things you could have said. I know. Hey, mommy and daddy need some alone time. <laughs> yeah. It's just we're just, we, you know, quality yeah. time with just the two of us. We love you guys, but mm -hmm. we just need a week to just focus on us. Yeah. Or if you want to lie, just a normal lie. <laughs> yes. A normal lie that is not We're so going disturbing. to a work conference. Yes. Kids can't come. Yes. Or like they were both in the Navy. We're being deployed a week, you know? There's, yeah. They, they tried so hard. Like they worked harder at, at that lie than any of the other options they could have told you. Yeah, what did they come up with that together in bed? They were like, so what are we going to tell them? I have a couple ideas I'd like to run by you. My parents love lying to us to freak us out. <laughs> Man, that is so God. sad but so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that one feels And that is my traumatic origin story. <laughs> oh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Ugh. Like, Dad told me that Mom got deployed the first time uh, she volunteered because she didn't like us. Jesus Christ. I know. She just wanted the hazard pay because you get paid more when you're deployed. And so I spent the entire first deployment like, damn, mom doesn't. She had to get away from me for nine months. Good God, Sarah. It's okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they just sound like they love inflicting pain. Oh, my Are God. They say yeah, they do. This rain <laughs> is bringing me back. Um, One day I'm going to get a big baby Bjorn and strap you to my chest and I'll carry you around for a whole day. And I'm just going to grab all mom. the fruit like yeah. off the shelves. And then you're going to be like, Sarah. And I'll be like, ha No, but I'll say, it's okay, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. And it's I'll, okay. You're a kid. It's okay. So quality, and I'll buy you all the fruit. Quality yeah. kangaroo care. Yeah. yeah. You ever uh, accidentally steal from a store and then your parents make you hold a sign outside the store that says, I stole? <laughs> no. But I did get, I did a lot of stealing I as was a kid. A, you, we talked about this on one of your YouTube videos. I was a really good shoplifter back in my yeah. day. Yeah. Ooh. I was bad. I was just really chaotic. And I, when I was four years old, three or four, maybe two, I was really young. I went, we was at a Macy's yeah, and I got lost and I was like so scared and oh, I was no. like, oh my God. And I went to an adult and I was like, a, a woman and I was like, I'm lost. And she took me to the Macy's uh, customer service, whatever. And they like fawned all over me. They sat me up on the counter. They gave me candy. They gave me a teddy bear because okay. they were like, she's so small and she's so scared. And I was like, wait, this is incredible. That and like my a good mom time. was like, then I came and picked you up and you like didn't want to leave and you're having so much fun. And after that, anytime we went to a store, I would sprint away from my mom and go up to a woman and be like, oh, I can't man. find my mom. And I would just get all this attention, very toxic. So then she put me on a leash. leash. I was, oh, thank yeah. God. I was going to say, you should have been a leash kid. Yes, I was. She put me on a leash and it had a little pocket on the front. I don't know, it was some animal and then I had a pocket a on the front. little monkey. And yeah. I would put, I would shop with candy in it, in mm. the pocket. Mm. And she'd make me bring it back. That is so sweet. Yeah. This is really sweet. It is. It was really sweet. I was a nightmare. <laughs> I was a really hyperactive child. I was a terrorist. I'm the okay. karma I'm going to get if I ever have kids. Oh, my God. I was a heathen. Yeah. Were you a crazy kid? No. I was too afraid. Yeah. I hid all the time. I was too scared to walk around the house, so I'd hide in my closet, and I'd sit crisscross Applesofts for hours listening to a CD on a CD player. Which CD? Um, it could be like Britney Spears or anything. Mm. Um, but I remember every house that we lived at, um, there would be a sweat imprint of a child sitting down crisscross <laughs> Applesofts in the oh. in the closet. And um, I, had, I, I don't know, to steady myself, to ground myself, there was also two handprints next to me sitting. But like every single house that we lived at in the closet, there was a sweat imprint of where I sat. And I'd fall asleep in there. No. Oh my this gosh. Is horrifying to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is, this is like, sorry. this is worse than Harry Potter, like yeah. living under the stairs. No, the Dudleys were actually pretty kind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Sometimes if we were bad, they would skip birthdays. I've heard about Parrot. I, I've actually was, so I'm on a subreddit about the only subreddit I'm on. This oh, is so crazy. Okay, what one? I'm a, just a lurker. Yeah. On the Eight Passengers subreddit, which is a family vlog channel. Oh. Just, and she loves to take away birthdays, Christmases uh -huh. for like bizarre, just like nothing. Like, oh, my five-year-old 
wouldn't do her chores and it's like what and then they don't get Christmas it's just psychotic but a lot of people are talking about that and a lot of adults are going back and being like pretty much 100% of people whose parents took away their birthdays they like don't speak to their parents I was <laughs> yeah. literally just gonna go say these people are gonna be the ones writing into reddit years from now being like my kids won't talk to me why yeah. what did I do I was a good parent yeah, yeah I actually have a really horrible story about skipping my brother's birthday all right, so he was nine years old and he was riding the bus to school and he uh, poked a hole in the school bus with a pencil. Yeah. And my parents found out and they, it was, he was nine. How did they find out? The school, uh, the bus oh, driver like okay. told. And so they um, skipped his 10th birthday. They kicked him out of the house for a week with no shoes and no food. Wait, where did he go? What? He slept on a playground for a week. He no. was nine. Yeah. Wait, that's crazy. And How did he CPS gave a, not show up at your house? Yeah, seriously. Oh, they, I don't know. But like we didn't know to like call 911. No. But, yeah, and then he, oh um, they pretended like his 10th birthday never happened. Oh, my God. Is he, where's he now? He's a physical therapist who lived in an RV. Okay, good. He's, been okay. <laughs> He's successful. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yes. good. Okay, good. All right, let's move on to one more. Am I the asshole? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, if we want traumatic stories. It would be so crazy to be reading these and all of a sudden. There's a trauma dump on everyone <laughs> yeah. today. Well, it's the latter half of the video, so it's fine. <laughs> this is what every latter half of our episodes yeah. are. It's just, is. Well, I mean, if we talk about family, like, it's not it even like you, you say something nice, and I, tr if I have to, if I, think of something nice to say about my mom or dad it's going to be like very random yeah. and very minor yeah well that's like every time i'm like god why do i talk about my dead dad on every episode but it's like well someone will bring up their dad i'm like well my dad he's yeah. dead and it's like <laughs> why am i brought, bring that up um it would be so crazy to be reading these and you realize that like your parents are writing these and they're like am i the asshole for making my son sleep on, me yeah, <laughs> on a playground for a week and everyone's like yes you are 100 <laughs> when he was nine turning 10 all right that is uh, oh deeply my. upsetting wait do you want to skip this one because it's so long and just do the last Great. one Am I the asshole for buying myself expensive clothes when my family struggles to make ends oh, meet? Oh, sorry, this post has been removed. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there oh, my go. gosh. Okay. Uh, um, Let's see. Okay, great. I, 18 female, have recently started my first full-time job. I still live at home and pay $300 for it nightly for rent. I pay for all my other necessities myself, my phone bill, hygiene products. My family has been very poor my whole life. As my mom, 44 female, is a single mom who is studying full-time, and looking after five children. I have a slight shopping addiction, as lots of girls my age do, and at least once a week, some sort of package slash food order is showing up at the doorstep. Today, a new pair of jeans around $150 arrived as I was in desperate need for a new pair, as I've outgrown my old ones, and my mom blew up at me. She called me selfish and sensitive and that she's ashamed I am her daughter, telling me that I should think about how it makes her feel when I buy excessive amounts of clothes when she can barely afford to heat the house in the wintertime. So am I the asshole for not offering to pay more rent and helping more with my family of six? Sorry. So am I the asshole for not offering to pay more rent and help with my family of six's bills? Or is she insane for asking me to stop spending my hard-earned money on things I want? So wait, so you said $300 nightly, which is not physically possible. Fortnightly. Oh. That's what I said. I guess that's probably monthly. Was... Fortnite? Fortnite? Fortnightly. Wait. What year is that? What is it? I know. Old Fortnightly. Days. Four score and seven years ago. <laughs> that means every two weeks. So she pays six hundred dollars a month for that's rent. That's a lot. I for mean, rent? Yeah. Oh at my 18? gosh, that's a lot. And so okay, so like yeah. Fortnightly? Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. If that's they a big live word. If that's a big they word, live in a city, six hundred dollars <laughs> out of the rent is still pretty sizable. So, but if they live in the country and she's that's paying six, psychotic, yeah. that's like half the rent. Well, there's there's five, half, yeah. yeah. Like, how big is this oh, place too? Because there's five other kids. Yeah, in like including her. Like, yeah, that's a lot. That's. Did it say the ages of the kids? Um, no, no. I also think it's like she said she has a shopping addiction, and I am like, when I read what she's buying, I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> Who? I, I think I used to think. Yeah. Uh, I struggle. I struggled with shopping, but I think also growing up not having a lot of money, shopping addiction is classified. Like you feel guilty after you buy anything, anything rather yourself. than like an actual shopping addiction. Where it's like you buying jeans because she said she grew, she didn't have any. Like that's not a shopping addiction, no. you know? Yeah, that's not. I think um, her mom is low income, so like she is less scarcity mindset, mm -hmm. and so spend yeah, spending any yeah. amount of money. I think her mom is just a dick. Yeah, one hundred percent. Well, I think her mom is like. No, hasn't been to therapy is what it, I don't know if her mom's like yeah. an, I, I think she's like I feel angry because I can't have these things exactly. and so I'm putting it on my daughter and she has like no ability or tools to work through that yeah. yeah 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 it's hard and finances are tough for so many people right now I mean we're in this weird recession pit and 
housing is just super unaffordable yeah. and there's a big crisis there. So I get it. The mom is really struggling and like maybe, you know, six kids, some of them were unplanned. Like six kids is a lot of kids. <laughs> of yeah. Even yeah. when you have a shit ton of money, like kids are expensive. So it sounds like she's the mom is like going back to school and trying to like be in a better position. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not your 18 year old's responsibility yeah. to help foot the bill for your decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And so as sad as it is, like scarcity mindset is probably a big thing. Emotional abuse and kind of like yeah. guilt. Like mm -hmm. you shouldn't be spending any money on yourself. Like I've done so much for you. You should be helping me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should be paying more in rent to help your brothers. Like mm -hmm. the best thing for our writer here is to go pay rent $600 somewhere else with roommates 100 yeah. remove yeah. yourself that's from the situation wild about it is because i'm like i feel like i hear some people will have their kids pay them rent but it's like uh, so much less than regular rent yeah because i'm like if you're just paying regular rent why are you living with your parents go just not live with your parents unless yeah. you like yeah. love your parents and you want to live with your parents and that's awesome but mm -hmm. like um or they have like a hot tub or something and you like want to live with your parents yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if not then like you just go get roommates if your parents are making you feel that way because it should be like whatever they've decided upon that is what that's the knowledge the mom should have. It's like, okay, I said 300. So if she wants to up it to 400, that would be crazy. But like mm -hmm. outside of that, she should be able to spend it on like Botox if she wanted to. Like who yeah. cares? Because it's not her mom's business. No. Yeah. And like what? I don't know. She's 18. I mean, I got my first job at 15 at Perkins. It's like yeah. basically a Denny's or an IHOP. And what kid with their own money doesn't go buy themselves shit like yeah and i do i regret it do i regret all 20 pairs of those rock revival and uh <laughs> me too jeans from the buckle yeah i do we do like hashtag it. me too jeans weren't they called me too <laughs> limited to no that was the kid store oh what? Me miss me oh. miss me oh. miss me, me too ah. me too jeans no miss there me probably too. is a brand somewhere <laughs> called me too jeans <laughs> oh god <laughs> That's so no, funny. Miss me. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But do I regret those? Yeah. They were like $160. But like, I was a kid. My mom yeah. wasn't making me pay rent. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to spend my money on. Yeah. But yeah. also like, you, I think I used to at like 18, 19, 20, I'd be like, I'm so bad at, with money. I'm so bad with money. And then I was like, oh, I've just like never learned how to be good. With, like, how would I know how to be good with money? Like, no one ever taught me no. how to be good with money. And I feel like I'm pretty good with money. And I'm like, because I've like educated myself. Mm -hmm. I but just I don't think spend it anymore. <laughs> I'm like scared to spend it. Yeah. Because of trauma like this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah my, my, I, uh, yeah, fun it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. Come on. Okay, so my, <laughs> I, uh, my parents growing up always told us that we were poor. Yeah. And then I like, when I turned, like, when I went to college, I was like, wait, mom's a doctor in 06 in the Navy, which is like the second highest position you can be in in the Navy. Yeah. Um, and then my dad programs big computers. Um, I'm not going to say what, but like, um, <laughs> so big they always, computers. they have. Yeah, they're not famous. They're massive. <laughs> <laughs> they're dangerous. Um, can, okay. And so like. They have like multiple income properties in which they rent out. They pay for all cars in cash. They did not pay for any of their college because they were both in the military and they did not pay for any of their children's college. Oh, they yeah, have they money. Have money. And yeah. so, but I, so I realized this later on. And then also my mom's been deployed five times and you get paid more when you've been deployed. I'm not gonna, there's so many like. Layers to it. Layers, like, yeah. yeah. Um, and so like my parents, they told us that they were poor. So I, and they were like broke, they couldn't afford things. And then when I got to like college, I was like, actually, there's no way in hell that these people were ever poor. So now <laughs> I have, I'm, I have the trauma of someone who was thought they were poor growing yeah. up. Scarcity mindset. But I was not actually poor. Yeah. Well, you were. Your parents were. I was. Yeah. But I like they scared me shitless, and so I. I was poor, but like I still like have they the family was never in any trouble. So I was like, and now I have the trauma of someone else. Like yeah. that I that I can't eat today because I don't know if my parents can afford it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's also a different level of trauma because it, at least if you have parents who are like, we can't afford this. Sometimes that's not even uh, like if there were times that my parents were like, we're really tight on money. Yeah. They like meant it, so it wasn't really traumatizing because I was like, yeah, they love me and we're all yeah. in this together. Whereas yours is more layered, where it's like they had that and they rather me have a hard time than yeah. pay for stuff for me that's that's even worse I would say mm -hmm. yeah um wow but, these were crazy I actually am like obsessed with reading these I'm like yeah, I want to do this constantly <laughs> it's a good so time fun. it is a good time thank you for Morgan for being on the podcast we do have two special guests in the studio that mm -hmm. we'd personally like 
to introduce you to. I can't wait. And kind of just sit down and see how the interaction goes. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back with Morgan and our two special guests. Thanks for joining me for a therapy session today, guys. Thank you for having us. I really appreciate you coming in. It's not every day that I get to actually interview people from the Reddit stories I find. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you taking the time to come in and talk to me about your posts today. You yeah, know, I mean, we appreciate it. We need some answers. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, let me read what you wrote in about initially so everyone can kind of get on the same page. And we'll see if you still stand by what you wrote. Mm -hmm. And we'll go from there. We'll see if you still stand by it. I am going to. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm literally right, so. All right. You can never be wrong. <laughs> Only right. Yeah, we, uh, most of the time I am. Can't even turn left in her car because she's always right. Yeah, mm. well. <laughs> Seriously, it's very inconvenient. Look at the hat. That <laughs> Yeah, the, you're like a wearing. UPS driver. You can only take right turns. Exactly. It's, it's for your safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I and the see. hat is prescription. Okay. Mm, okay. That's so the title of your post was, am I the asshole for buying lower grade steaks when my in-laws visit and serving my dad and mom Wagyu? Mm -hmm. My wife and I live far away from both our sets of parents. We visit them a couple of times a year and they visit us about the same. My mom and dad love food. They will buy pounds of garlic and leave it in a rice maker for a month to make black garlic. They plan their vacations around amazing restaurants. Mm -hmm. My in-laws are lovely people, but boiling chicken drumsticks is fancy for them. And they refuse to eat steak that isn't well done. I discovered this the first time I went to their home for dinner. I wasn't even asked how I like my steak. Everyone got a well done steak. It took me years to convince my wife to try a medium rare steak. Now she loves them. I bought some beautiful prime rib steaks for them when they came over and when we moved in together. I made theirs medium well and I died a little inside. Her dad took it back to the grill and destroyed them. So now I buy select grade meat. I've been buying some excellent quality Wagyu for when my parents visit. Not every single time, maybe once a year. My wife says I'm being an asshole by not treating both families the same. I don't think I should waste money on great food for them when I know how they will treat it. Yeah. So obviously it's super disrespectful to treat our parents differently. But they are different. Uh, your parents wanted to have our wedding reception at Waffle House. Yeah, because that's a special place to them. In our family, we own two chains of Waffle Houses. Uh huh. Well, I mean, that's not something to brag about. If anything, that's a badge of shame. No, okay, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Just because your parents love money hoarding and own a big corporation. Congratulations. My parents are small town folks who I think deserve to be... I don't know, wined and dined sometimes. Mm -hmm. Part of the interview process of their Waffle House is seeing if the employees can fist fight at 3 a.m. Yeah, and you know how they know about that? Because they interviewed and didn't get hired. I'm sorry if I can't take a punch. Mm -hmm. But no, I feel like your parents, you know, they eat beans and curd and they're very British about what they like, you know, yeah. toast. It's just, I mean, I figured they're not going to want, like, a really nice steak. Well, you didn't ask them. Because they didn't need to. It was written across their face, their barbecue-laden face. Mm. This is the actual core of the problem, I'll tell you. Okay, let's hear it. You want everything done your way, even if other people don't want it that way. So you would rather my parents have a really expensive steak, and you'd rather them eat it in a way that they don't like, so it's up to your standards. Why don't you just let them eat it really well done so they enjoy it? When you go to a Michelin star restaurant and you order the steak, you're not going to ask for ketchup on the side. You're going to take it how the chef gives it to you, especially if you're low class. You're not a chef. I basically am chef by proxy because I eat wag Wagyu. No, that's not true. You're you not a chef. You're a Twitch streamer. Mm -hmm. That's not a chef. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I do film chefs and line cooks for my Twitch stream. So I've observed enough in their natural environment to know what is good food and what is not. Okay. Mm. Is there any middle ground between you two? It sounds like we're having you know, quite the communication breakdown, do you think there is a solution where you would both feel good, where your parents might be getting wined and dined a little bit, 
Yeah. But you're not sacrificing your morals on overcooking a steak. I just, I mean, maybe maybe we should eat in different rooms. How, like, Thanksgiving, there's an How adult. How that help? There's an adult table, and then there's a table for adults with a kid's palate. And I would set up, you know, sippy cups for your parents. Because and I would give them plastic forks and knives and a paper plate and a little bib because I know how they get a little bit messy and eat with their hands and not in a cool way. So does that sound like a happy middle ground? I would serve them the same food. Does that sound like a middle ground to you? You know, is there anything your parents like? Do they like drinks? Are they more of a drink person? They, they like love drinks. They love steak. Jello they shots. love waffles. Yeah, they do like jello shots. You know why? Because jello shots are fun. Mm-hmm. So and maybe. don't talk about being trashy while you're wearing that hat. So maybe this- you make them some jello shots. Yeah. Instead of the Karkov or the Burnett's vodka, maybe we go with a Grey Goose to kind of even out on spending less on the steak. I can't waste my good Tito's on her parents because let me tell you, those people can drink. It is disgusting. You know what? This is just so rude. It's so upsetting because this is the the crux of the issue is that they make three million dollars a year on Twitch. And all I'm asking is for you to spend some of your money on my parents who are hardworking Waffle House owners and you won't do it. And I'm telling you, it's the one thing that will make me happy and you won't do it. That really speaks volumes to me. But. This and you think because they don't have as much money, they should be sitting at a children's table? You know how offensive that is? I mean, if they can sit, sit at a Waffle House booth with knife punctures in it and eat there every morning, then, yeah, they can sit in some high chairs. My thing is, is that, like, they also own, they own these Waffle Houses. They can bring the waffles and they can bring the bacon. Mm. So why am I the person buying all the food for the people who literally own a lot of food? You know, and they own a griddle. What can't they bring that over when, you know, we're making steaks? Because you invite them over. You say, I'm going to make dinner for the family. Mm -hmm. What if I said that your parents needed to bring their griddle all the way from across the country to our house? Mm -hmm. And they had to use that. That's just like so much to ask. They both live far Mm -hmm. away. How is my family going to bring food on the plane from the Waffle House? It's going to smell up the whole plane. Mm Mm-hmm. Use their carry-on to bring a bunch of bacon. That doesn't even make any sense. If it's freeze-dried and it's not wet, you can bring food on a plane. It just takes a couple extra steps at TSA. And I know they're not the type of people to get pre-checked because I don't even think they can navigate the Internet. You know? You know what? Mm. If you Do you think this way about me? If you think this badly about my family, maybe we shouldn't even be together. Babe. You're being crazy right now. No, I'm not being crazy. Do you think I'm being crazy? You know, I think there's some big feelings at the root of this issue. Mm -hmm. See, you're emotional. No, you are so insensitive. No, I'm not. Do you feel like her family doesn't, you know, put in the energy you're putting in? Is that where this is all coming from? Do you feel a little neglected down there? Yeah, I do. Because my parents, you know how far they live from us. 20 minutes away. And every six months, they make the trek out to see us. But her family, who lives 3,000 miles away in England right now to take care of your sick grandma. Why are you doing quotes? They can only visit every couple of months. It's like, I feel like they're not putting in the work. You see that they're the problem, right? I just need to, like, I, I need to make sure I you guys are definitely I'm, on different pages I feel right like now. it's on even. Page. No, it, what it's are you? no, it isn't. Babe. My parents live 3,000. Why did you do quotes around my grandma saying she is dying? Okay, yeah, maybe, but she's maybe not. Maybe you could go see firsthand. Maybe you could help out with grandma. That might be a good yes, compromise. You're mm-hmm. judging so much about them visiting. You've never visited London. But that's not fair. It's traumatizing to see your grandma sick when m- both of mine are really healthy. Traumatizing because you're so worried they're going to die? Yeah, and it's just like, what would she eat? I know that, you know, she doesn't have her teeth anymore. And they, I don't want to chew she up her food fluid. for her. She drinks fluid. Uh, she drinks sh- jello shots, probably. No, she doesn't. This is just so not fair. Why did I say that's not fair? You insinuated that my grandma who's sick takes jello shots. I've never insinuated that before. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the about, last babe. time she sends you a funny video that's supposed to be a joke. Mm-hmm. I was a joke. 
Yeah, she's 90. She took a jello shot. She sent a video to you. It was supposed to be funny. She doesn't do that all the time. I've never seen someone mainline jello before. I didn't even know it could go straight in the blood. And I knew you were going to just bring that up. Like, I knew when they sent that you were just going to bring it up. So where would you guys like to go from here? I would like to break up. I thought you were going to say you'd like to go to Waffle House. I, why? I, th- my parents own two chains of Waffle House. That's a normal living. They live 3,000 miles away in the only London-owned Waffle Houses. And... It's so bizarre to me that you think all of us only, only ever eat Waffle House. I live so far away from it. Mm -hmm. I would like to stay together purely for the fact that I have a superiority complex and I need someone to make the bed in the morning. Okay, so Mm -hmm. then we're going to break up. No, no, no. See, the thing is, is you own the house. Squatters have a lot of rights in California. No, they not because you're not a squatter. I'm kicking you out of my house. I will be a squatter. Okay. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. We'll we'll work this out. Well, you know, we can have on an individual session as well. Yeah. So your yeah. final conclusion: Who's the asshole in this situation? You know, I think I don't know if there really is an asshole here. It sounds like mm-hmm. people just have different palettes. Mm-hmm. You might need to be more accommodating to her family as well, and you might not want to spend the money on the wagyu, but it should be a little more balanced. So if your family likes expensive drinks. The Wagyu budget's going to go towards the drinks, and you're going to save on the steaks that they like to burn. So mm-hmm. I think that just kind of balances it out. Yeah, we have different palettes. My family is Pantone, and yours is Crayola. I don't know what Pantone is. See? Mm. My point exactly. None so of this will be you. an issue, because I won't be seeing you after today. So All thank you so right. much. You can take your stuff out of the house. Mm-hmm. Thank you. for mm-hmm. the, Seriously, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing your side as well. Yeah. yeah. Really thank appreciate you. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love you, babe. What's for dinner? Okay, I love you too. Kraft mac and cheese. Mm. Well, at least it's brand name. Usually this one gets the off brand, you know? I'm done. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank <laughs> you for having me. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was. I'm like obsessed with these. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with Am I the Asshole now. I'm hey, like we'll so get sad. you on two hot takes. It'll um, be a good time. Oh my God, please. Um, thank you guys so much today for joining us on the BCC Club. Yes. To talk about Am I the Asshole. But speaking of two hot takes, where can people find it? On YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, wherever you listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Two hot takes. And it's not... It's the number two spelled out, T-W-O. Yes. Hot takes. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Perfect. Well, thank you for being on, and make sure to like and subscribe to the BCC Club on YouTube, and also we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any place you get your podcasts. And then after you're done with our episode or Morgan's episode, which you switch and then listen to both of us. (laughs) Yes. We actually need to head out because I hear uh, our two guests downstairs uh, screaming at each other, so Mm -hmm. we need to make sure to go figure that out. Thank you guys so much. Bye.